Hello, everybody. Oh, there's some things to answer already. Cool. Um, hello, Ollie. Yeah, I've turned it off, but it's there's a bit of delay anyway. I think we're only on like five seconds, so it could be worse, but I think it's to do with my Wi-Fi. Um, hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Emerald. Hey, Grace. Hey, Harry. Uh, Harry, why are you in this one? Are you going surfing again? If so, have a good surf. Anybody else out there? That's That's like five of you. Hopefully there's a few more. Right, so um, we're moving on from what you're doing yesterday and moving on to something called the standard normal distribution. Hey Rob, hey Molly, hey Jasmine, I'm Finn, hey Finn, good, well done for coming in, oh cool, okay, I see what's going on. Alright, um, so kind of picking up where we left off uh, last lecture, if I bring up the old calculator. Uh, something that I found interesting was no one spotted a last lecture. If we did a normal distribution, if I type in any old rubbish, plot it. No one spotted. If if I type in the mean as 23, when I plot this, the mean is clearly 0. So on this scale, on this sketch on the uh, on the calculator the mean is am I on top of it yeah the mean here is zero and the standard deviation it looks like is about one because that's our point of inflection so what gives this is basically the standard normal distribution and way back before students used graphical calculators um, way back before we had the class with calculators, students had to use a statistical data table. And obviously, you couldn't have every normal distribution in the world included in a table because you'd have an infinite sized table, which is basically what the calculators have. So what students used to have to do was use this thing called the standard normal distribution. And a standard normal distribution, we always call it Z. So Z is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So, and that's why the graph over here has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one because it's the classic, classic, original, OG, whatever, standard normal distribution. I've lost a page of notes, I've just realized. Where's that gone? There it is, cool. All right, so the standard normal distribution uh, the standard normal distribution looks like this. It looks the same, but it has a mean of 0 and a sigma of 1. And you'll notice on the calculator sketches it always goes from minus 4 to 4. The reason it does that is because as you guys saw oh, missed, um, 2 3 4 Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. As you guys saw the other day, um, was it 95 percent or six? Let's let's let's, uh, let's do this properly. Sixty-eight percent of our data is here between one standard deviation, which in this case the standard deviation is one. So sixty-eight percent of the data is here. Ninety-five, uh, ninety-five percent of the data is within two standard deviations. And 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations. So within four standard deviations, you're talking like 99.999% of this area. So yeah, our standard normal distribution, we always draw it from four to minus four uh, because that's the that's all that you ever need. Anything after here kind of tends off towards zero. So that's a standard normal distribution. Now, what the calculator does is the calculator knows all the percentages for the standard normal distribution. So when you type in your values that aren't with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, it then transforms your distribution into this standard normal distribution and solves it using this distribution. Uh, Rob, I'll answer your question at the end to do with that. Um, so what students used to have to do was get these massive tables out in the middle of the exam that look like this and you can see if you look closely they give you a probability and a z value 
and there's loads of them all the way from starting with z equals 0 point something all the way down to z equals 4 and a whole probability of 1 so students used to have to use these books so you guys have got a slight advantage you can use the calculator instead but we still need to be able to go from the old z stuff to the new x stuff which is what you guys have been looking at so this is our standard classic normal distribution what we've been doing so far has been something like x n mu and sigma and we have to be able to turn one distribution into the other distribution okay let's try and make that a bit clearer because this is a bit weird at first Right, so um, I'm going to draw that standard distribution again, but it's but a bit smaller. So mean of zero, four, minus four, x, uh, z, and not one squared. And we're going to have another distribution, which I'm going to call the length of giraffes necks, which I looked up last night, Good uh, giraffes have an average length neck of 2.2 meters uh, with a standard deviation of about 0.2. So this is going to go up to 2.8 and down to 1.6. <coughs> so x is normal, 2.2, 0.2 is our standard deviation squared. So this is giraffe necks. So if we want to work out any probabilities on our uh, on our giraffe neck distribution, this one here, we have to turn this distribution into this distribution. And this is what the calculator does automatically, but we're going to have to be able to do this manually as well so we can solve some extra questions. So the way we do that, think about it like a transformation. We have to transform this bell shape into this bell shape. I just realized my uh, laptop isn't charging, which is a bit of a worry. So, um, sorry guys, I will be back. This is if this doesn't charge, we're not going to get very far today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is anything charging? Have I got power in my house currently? Yes. Um. Sorry, guys. I will be right back. I just uh, need to fix whatever's going on here. Um. Hmm, I'll be right back guys. Uh yeah, I do apologize. Um two seconds. back in business um don't know what that was about cool yeah trusty old reliable broken macbook charger much better than brand new one okay anyway so sorry about that 
Uh, so we were talking about. Lost my pen now. There we go. <laughs> okay, we were talking about uh, transforming the giraffe neck normal distribution into a standard normal distribution. Okay, so we need to transform it. So if this one has a mean of 2.2, if the middle of this data set is 2.2, we want to turn this 2.2 into 0. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to subtract 2.2 from every single x value. And that's going to move this whole shape to the right until it's got a mean of 0. So the first thing we say is z equals x minus mu. So that shifts it all to the left. Right, the next thing we need to worry about is, cool, we've stretched it. R1 goes from 1.8 to 1. Point, no, what does that say? Is that a 2? That should be a 2. R1 goes from 2.8 to 1.6, but the classic normal distribution goes from 4 to minus 4. So we need to squash our distribution or stretch our distribution to make it fit the standard normal distribution. So how, how we're going to do that is we're going to divide our data by the standard deviation sigma. And if we do that, it will turn this data into this data. And then we can calculate these probabilities using the old classic normal distribution with these probabilities. So that's what we're going to be looking at today mainly is transforming any distribution into the normal distribution. So I'm just going to put some labels on this for you guys. Um, so this is your Z value in the classic on the standard distribution. This is the X value in your distribution of whatever data you're looking at. This is the mean of your distribution. And this is the standard deviation of your distribution. Hello, Joe Lee. Welcome to the chat. And Sally as well. Welcome, guys. Cool. So, is everybody happy with this? This is just an equation that transforms any distribution could be giraffe necks, could be people's height, people's intelligence, people's weight, could be the weight of hippopotamus. Anything that fits a normal distribution, you can then transform it to fit this classic distribution. And we know all the values they are in this table. They're also loaded into your calculator for this distribution. And that's how we work out all the other probabilities, all the other stuff that we did last lecture. That's how you calculate it, doesn't it? That's how we're going to be able to do it um, by changing one distribution into this distribution cool if no one has any questions uh, we will try an example actually before we try an example um, we'll use the percentage points table okay cool so moving on all right so there is one table that you guys have to use and you don't have to memorize this it's given to you in the exam um, which is this table here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. <clears throat> so let's have a read through this. So it says the values Z in the table are those with a random variable. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the values Z in the table are those which a random variable Z exceeds with probability P. That is, and this is the important bit, P is greater than Z is the probability. So what you need to take from this is that this table shows you the probabilities of being greater than the given Z value. Does that fit? Yeah, cool. All right, so in other words, um, what this table gives you, if I sketch a distribution, if you know, I mean zero, if you know uh, this probability here, this is P, you can go to the table and you can find Z. So the table only works for greater than. So for probability Z is greater than Z. 
and that's why the probability here is above our z value <clears throat> so if you know the probability of being more than your value you go to the table and if it's a nice kind of rounded number i say kind of nice numbers 0 0.1 0 0.15 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.05 0 0.0025 0 0.0025 0 0.0005 0 0.0005 they're all like they're not multiples of five but they're all kind of like nice wholesome numbers if you've got a probability that's one of those numbers and it's a greater than probability we can probably do it just using the table without needing to pick up the calculator so for example um eg probability z is greater than a equals 0 0.010 find a well, I could sketch it. Probability of being greater than this value is tiny, so A is probably going to be over here. And our probability there would be 0 0.01. So I can look in my table. So I'm looking for 0 0.01, which is here giving us a probability of, or a Z value of 3.0902. <coughs> so A equals 3.0902. So we can use this table when we're talking about a Z distribution, which is the standard normal, and when the probability is greater than and when it's one of these nice kind of rounded, rounded nice numbers. <coughs> cool. Right, so we're going to try using this table to calculate some values. So if I get rid of what I've done so far. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Hopefully you guys can still see that. Yeah, that'll do. Cool. Right. And also I have spelt percentage like an idiot. So let's <laughs> percentage. Let's fix that. Cool. All right. So I want you guys to try and do these. So part A, we're going to say um, given probability z maybe let's type this a given probability z is greater than a equals 0.4 find a so we're told the probability z is greater than a value we're trying to find is 0.4. We want to use that to try and find a. So <clears throat> we're going to sketch it. We always need to <clears throat> always need to sketch these. <clears throat> so a uh, quick sketch. So mean of zero there. So uh, the probability of being greater than A is 0 0.4. So if you remember, the whole of this area is 1. Half of this area is 0.5. So we're told the probability of being greater than A is 0 0.4. So that means the area from here back is 0 0.4. So A must be above zero. So I'm going to write A in. <clears throat> and shade this area, call it 0 0.4. We are then, <clears throat> because it's greater than, the table is only for greater than. We can look in our table for 0 0.4, and that's our A value, 0 0.2533. Nice and easy. Okay, I want you guys to try the next one, though, because it does get a little bit trickier. So I'm going to write down a few of these for you guys to do.
So if you guys try these, um, <coughs> first person to comment the correct answers wins. So give it a go. When you've got an answer, type it into the comment section. Given <coughs> P is Z greater than A. Equals So four there for you guys to try. And we already did that first one, so I'll put the answer in. 0 0.2533. So I reckon I'll give you four minutes to give those a go. Make sure you sketch each one. The hardest bit is probably locating where A is. Then remember the table is only for greater than probabilities. Cool, give it a go, see what you can work out. Type your answers into the chat when you've got them. Cheers, guys. If you need help as well, guys, just comment and I'll uh, give you some hints. Go through B. Yeah, no worries, Ollie. Um, I'll talk that through quickly now just while I leave the time running. So if I sketch part B, probability Z is greater than this value is 0 0.1. So there's not much chance of being any bigger than A. So A is going to be right up here. That bit is going to be 0 0.1. So it's already greater than. We want to look in the table. Um, so looking in our table for 0 0.1, it gives me this value here. So A equals 1.2816. So sketch it, decide where you think A needs to go based on the probability, and then look in the table for the greater than region to find your corresponding A value. can't read today that says 1.2816. Yeah, it's looking like the lag is about five seconds, so uh, better than mind more questions, but I will try and hold the five seconds before I do anything. Do I have corona? Don't think so. Um, I'll let you guys know if I do. No temperatures yet, but I do have a little bit of a cough. But I've been doing a lot of talking for the last few days, so that might be why. Fingers crossed.
Uh, part C is it's close to that, Ollie. Um, I don't want to give it away. You found the right number, but it's not the right final answer. Have a look at your sketch. Remember, zero is the mean, so maybe put the mean in on your sketch. On my sketch, zero would be here. So I knew that my A had to be more than zero. So have a have a think about what you've got for your answer. All right, I'll give you guys one more minute to try and uh, finish these off because I think, I think some of you are getting pretty close. So, do a sketch. There we go. Uh, probably Z is greater than A to the minus one, and A is the mean. So, then we've got all this area not being in. Thank you. I always keep doing that. All right. Um, yeah, so I've done a sketch for part C. I know the probability Z is greater than A is 0 0.8, so that's why all this area is 0 0.8. A must be down here. Now, this is where it gets a bit more difficult. If that area there is 0.8, then this area here is 0.2. And the reason that's important is if you look in our table, our table starts at 0.5 and gets smaller. So 0.8 isn't going to be in the table. The other thing to bear in mind is that the mean here is 0. So A is going to be negative. And the other thing you might notice is that none of these values are negative. So this table, if you like, is a snapshot of the normal distribution. It's literally just half of it. So I'm going to put a minus sign next to A to remind me that my A needs to be negative. Um, because the normal distribution is completely symmetrical, if this is a minus value, there's going to be a positive version of A here. So I'm going to draw that in. And because it's symmetrical, this tail was 0.2, so this tail here is going to be 0.2. So by doing that, I could then find this value of A, the positive value of A, can't really point. Uh, find the positive value of A, this one here, using table. So 0.2 is my probability. Where's 0.2? There it is. So I know that A is 0.8416, like Holly said in the comments. But that's not what we were looking for. That's what I found. That's what I wanted. So the actual answer, A is minus 0.8416. So we've used the sketch to find an equivalent area with an equivalent value that's the wrong sign. We found that and then we've corrected our sign afterwards. So for part C you should get minus 0.8416. Anyone got any questions about that? No, don't think so. Okay, uh, let's try part D. So, part D, again, always draw a sketch. 
So we've got probability Z is less than A is 0.3. So less than A, 0.3. So A is going to be about here, making this area 0.3. So it's a similar question to what we did in part C. Um, this value again is going to be negative. We know zero is in the middle. I could write an equivalent A over here. And this area here will then also be 0 0.3. Now we've got the greater than region. We can look in our thing and find, well, it's the one I've drawn over already. 0 0.3 is going to be this value 0 0.2 0 0.5244 so a is 0 0.5244 therefore we want to find a 0. Nah, minus 0 0.5244 which is our last answer cool All right anyone got any questions so it's the idea of sketching it finding an equivalent region because we know the table only has positive values and because we know the pos the table only has um, greater than probabilities as well you are an equilateral triangle what does that mean <laughs> Uh, uh, am I an equilateral triangle? What? I guess so. Anyway, um, let's do the next cos acute. Oh, well, that's a good pun. I like that. Thanks, Lolly. All right, uh, next one. So I want you guys to try this. Uh, you don't need the table for this, so I haven't included it. This is just doing a Z calculation using your calculator. That's a really bad joke. All right, I'll give you guys two minutes to do these. It's just tapping some stuff into the calculator but could you work out what the probabilities are for z being between those boundaries and make sure you sketch these as well <laughs> Cool. All right, guys, um, let's go through these. It should be pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, so for these ones, we need to use calculator. And we need to sketch. So if I bring the calculator back up, uh, we can really just type these in. So let's get us back down to size. All right, so uh, if we put in our lower, I'm in the way, get out of the way, there we go, lower minus 2.16, upper minus 0.85. 
sigma 1 mu 0 make sure you get those the right way around it's easily done uh, do a sketch see that sketch the right thing looks good to me so yeah point no one eight two three well done Ollie there good job no point no point ah, one eight two three good and the other one the reason I wanted you guys to do this was to show you that if you put in the other values the region is actually the same region so lower 0.85 upper 2.16 sketch it same region different place we get same value for that one cool right well done um next slide then all right and this is gonna be a bit more difficult so um and these are these are the kind of standard questions you see quite often so I'm just going to make these a bit bigger so you guys can get the most of them. There you go. And Cool. All right. So we've got use the table to find that may as well be bigger. All right, use the percentage points table, which is here, to find the value of Z that gives you the probability they've written up there. And part B, a fight jet training program takes only the top 2.5% candidates on the test. Given the scores can be modeled using the normal distribution of mean 80 and elevation 4, use your answer to part A, the Z value, to find the X value, which is the score that you want to get. So you're going to need to use this as well. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. So can you guys try this? Part A is use the table, and then part B is use the equation to change your table value into a real life value, which would be the score for this fighter jet training program. So uh, it's worth four marks, I think. Four minutes seems fair for that one. So time is starting now. Message if you need help, and if you guys could uh, also post your answers when you get them, that would be great.
Anybody get anywhere with it? Also, is anybody still there apart from Holly? Holly, thank you for all the commenting, but uh, where's where's the rest of the class gone? Ooh. All right, um, let's go through part A, and I'll give you guys a little bit more time to uh, to try part B. So, um, yeah, what are we doing? So, we've got Z table. Okay, so we want to let's do a sketch. Ollie is talking for the class. Yeah, it does seem that way. So, um, sketch this one. Probability Z greater than this is 0 0.025. So we know this area, 0 0.025. That's the value of Z that we want. So if we look at our table, 0 0.025 is about here. So we get 1.960. So, for part A, Z equals 0.196. It's like, oh, cool. Oh, fair enough. That's fine then. Cool. Who's in the room then? Anyway, um, so Z, 1.196. Nine six. Okay, so we're going to be using the equation z equals x minus mu over sigma. And we know mean is 80. So if we write all this out, x has a mean 80 standard deviation 4. And we need to turn our 1.96 into an x value. So we're going to say 1.96 equals x take 80 divided by 4 and if you work all that out we get x equals 87.84 therefore x equals 88 cool anyone got any questions about that Cool. I assume that's all fine. So yeah, I'll move on. Okay. Um, so another one here for you guys to try again. Sorry, this is a bit small. I'll make it a bit bigger. So you've got this lovely question about light bulbs. So we need to use the table here to uh, find the Z values that correspond to 90 and 10 percentile range. Um, uh, Predictive amount of light bulb, blah, 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 blah. See if you can work that out, part B. So I'm going to give you some time to do that. Rob, I will answer all other questions at the end of the lecture to the best of my ability, um, but we'll get through all the content first and then I'll sort out any other bits at the very end. So if you guys could give this one a go. Uh, four marks, let's say five minutes for this one. Same idea again though, you're basically doing what we did in the last question, but now we've got two values, the 90th and the 10th percentiles. Cool, give that a go, comment if you need any help.
Uh, for A, it wants you to find the Z values that correspond to those percentages. So if you if you sketched it, uh, 10 and 90 percentiles. So 10 percentile will be here, 0 0.1. 90 percentile will be here, 0 0.1. It wants you to find these values of Z <coughs> using the table. Yeah, two answers. Um, and then for part B, you're going to need to turn those Z values into X values, which are lifetimes of light bulbs, and work out the range of those values. Yeah, two, two answers that will get, lead to one answer for part B. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the the uh, distribution is symmetrical, about zero. So one's positive, one's negative. Yeah, spot on, spot on, Ollie. Because the percentage is the same, they are symmetrical. Cool. All right. Um, hopefully you guys got some of that one. So uh, looking at the table, if we find 0.1, uh, where is 0.1? There it is, 1.2816. So we've got positive and negative versions of that. 1.2816 minus 1.2816. Cool. So we now need to code these using our Z equation. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. These are Z values because we found them in the Z table. Uh, so we'll code each one separately. So if I do one of them in green, one of them in yellow, uh, minus 1.2816 equals X take mean was 1175, sigma was 56. And the other one is 1.2816 equals x take 1175 over 56. Cool. All right, you do need to do both of these. I know you might think, oh, but they're the same. Um, because you're adding this value here on, it will slightly change based on the fact that one of these is positive and one of these is negative. So if we times both answers by 56 and add 1175 for the yellow one, we get uh, x is 1246 point seven seven. For the green one, we get 1103.23. So the range between those two, we get range is 144 hours cool 
all right hopefully you guys are okay with that um that brings us to like the halfway point in the lecture so we're going to change topics now um that's the standard normal distribution if you look in the title the next bit is going to be finding mu and sigma but if you do want any more practice on this topic which you might because we have gone through it quite quickly uh there's a couple questions i'm going to set you guys as like stuff to do when you're bored because it's going to be boring over the next few weeks or months or whatever so um page 49 4 and 6 and if you get stuck on either of those just drop me an email and i will send you a, a link or do it via teams or something cool right moving onwards then the next topic we're looking at is well so far we have used an x value to find a probability and we did the inverse we used a probability to find an x value and we've done all this z stuff we're going to bring all that together and the next topic is to try and find unknown values of mu and sigma so as i've said so far we found a we found p but we haven't found mu and sigma cool so we're going to do this one as an example and then you guys are going to try one yourselves so we've got a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and sigma as an unknown we're told 4x is less than 46 the probability is 0.2119 we want to now use that to find sigma so if i sketch what we know so far We know the mean was 50. We know the probability of being less than 46 is 0.2119. So we want to use this to try and find what the standard deviation is. Okay, so um, if we wrote down what we've got basically the only equation we know that has sigma in it is the z equation so we know we're going to have to use z equals x minus mu over sigma it's the only thing we can use to find sigma because if we try putting all this info in the calculator the calculator needs to have a sigma to work so we can't do that what we can do then is fill out the bits in the blue equation up here that we know so far so we don't know z but we know x is 46 and we know mu is 50 but we don't know sigma so given that sigma is the thing we've been asked to find we need z if we can find z then we can add 50 or whatever work it out and we can find sigma so we need to find z and what we can do is we can say okay well we know the probability that corresponds to 46 Instead of 46, we could use this probability to find the z value that corresponds to 46. Put the z value here, and then we're away. So we're going to use our calculator. We're going to use the standard normal distribution as a tool to let us find z, which will in turn let us find sigma. So if I bring up the calculator, um, we're going to go back, back, normal, now we know the probability, so it's an inverse normal question. Our tail is to the left, so you could do this straight away, nice and easy on the class whiz. Area 0.2119. Sigma, well, this is a standard distribution, so sigma is 1, mu is 0. We can sketch it, or well, we can't sketch it because it's inverse. Uh, put equals, and we get z equals minus 0.7. 998 so let's write that down z minus 0. let's just call it 0. 0.8 because that would round after what many decimal places so get rid of the calculator so i can use that value of z in this equation and find sigma so we got minus 0. 0.8 equals 46 take 50 over sigma so if i swap these two over times uh, cool, we're doing. if i times up by sigma divide down by 0 0.8 we can rearrange and get sigma equals 5. cool 
And it's the exact same method if you wanted to find mu. So if they gave us 5 for sigma and they didn't give us mu, we could do exactly the same thing. Find z, put z in. The thing we didn't know would be up here instead of down here, but the same idea, times up by 5 and work out what mu is. So to find mu or sigma, we're going to do it via finding z, which we can do via knowing the probability. Right, some questions require you to find mu and sigma so you need to find both and the only way they can do that is if they give you some more information because obviously you've got two unknowns you're going to need to have two simultaneous equations in order to solve it so if they want you to find mu and sigma they will give you two statements like this you'll solve both of them you'll get two equations like this one and then you'll solve them simultaneously to find mu and to find sigma so I've got a question like that for you guys to try. Uh, please comment your answers if you solve it because it helps everyone see what's going on. Um, so let's give this a go. Could you guys try this one? So I think I'll say four minutes on time, which might be a bit tight, but we'll start talking about it in four minutes time. All right. Cheers, guys. If you need help as well, uh, just shout. Grace says, can I go over how to find Z on the calculator again? Yeah, so basically there's there's four things you could have to find, Grace. There's a probability, there's a value, or there's mu and sigma. Now, if you're given a probability, you need to use the inverse normal to find Z. And if you're given a Z value, you use a cumulative probability to find um, the normal. So can I bring the calculator in? Um, Two seconds, that's just to uh, add existing calc. Yes, there we go. So to find Z, we use this inverse normal function. So if I go back to menu, statistics, uh, distribution, normal, and then finding Z is the inverse one because we put in the probability, which is the area, and it gives you the Z value. So that, does that help with your question? It should be the same on your graphical, because I know you've got the older graphical, but it should be the same idea. Um, tell it what the tail is, put in the probability, and find your Z value. Uh, you do have to learn the Z equation, yeah. So Z, e Z equals X minus mu over sigma. But I'd always think about it as, you know, how I went through in the beginning. If you got a this this graph and you want to make it fit the other graph, you need to translate it to make it have a mean of zero. And then you need to stretch it or squash it by dividing by a scale factor to make it have a standard deviation of one. So by dividing it by its own, by dividing a spread by the size of the spread, you force the spread to have a spread of one. It's kind of like when we did um, unit vectors. If you divide a vector by its own size, it now has a size of one. Well, if you divide a, a bell curve by its own size, you get a size of one. Ollie says we don't have exams, so yeah, that's that might be true. Um, maybe you don't need to learn Z, but uh, for now we'll stick with the assumption that you do because. We haven't been told otherwise, but I'll talk. I'll talk more about exams and uh, what the hell's going on at the end of this lecture. So save it for then.
If you had to give us grades, what would you base them on? What would you consider? Um, I'll again, I'll speak to you at the end about this, guys, because we've not been told much. Um, I've had to think about it, but uh, I'll save it for the end. Anyway, so let's go through this one then. So, um, cool, same as before, but we've got two different regions, and uh, we can plot both of these on the same normal curve. So we got greater than 35 is 0 0.025 and we've got less than 15 is 0 0.1469 cool so again you need to find the corresponding z values and then we're going to transform those so if you bring the calculator back up and we're going to type in first one tail to the left 0.1469 check it's still got sigma as 1 and mu as 0 and we get the x value for that one is going to be minus 1.05 cool do the same thing again uh, if you're using a class whiz remember it only does less than probability so you need to do 1 minus 0.025 put that in it'll give you the same answer though but we can just uh, change our tail to the right and put in 0.025 and go down to execute and then we get the inverse normal is 1.96 so we got the two z values so let's get rid of the calculator so let's get rid of the calculator there you go Cool. All right, so we're going to transform both these z values using our equation up there. So the first one we'll do in green, the second one we'll do in yellow. So one minus 1.05 equals 15, which is x, minus mu over sigma. Uh, the one in yellow then, uh, 1.96 is 35 minus mu over sigma. I can times up by sigma to make these nice linear equations. So minus 1.05 sigma equals 15 take mu and 1.96 sigma is 35 take mu and solve these simultaneously. So I think the easiest way is if I do the yellow one take away the green one because the mu's will cancel 35 take 15 will give me 20 and I can add the two sigmas because I'm subtracting a negative so we'd get a uh, what would that be 2 3 point oh one sigma equals 20 and if you solve that you get sigma equals 6.64 I can plug that back into either equation to find mu is 21 point nine eight cool anyone got any questions about that so same as before find your z's put the z's into the equation linking x and z uh get two equations make them linear solve them simultaneously find your unknown values cool all right i'm going to assume you guys are right with that so coming to the end i think we're going to do one more question so i want you guys to try this on your own with a bit less help from me this time um i'll just clear the slide of this one cool so if you guys would try this one same idea this time uh but we're talking penguins oh yeah and part c so part a part b should be fine if you coped with the last one okay part c is a binomial question using probability um so yeah be careful part c is a mix of normal and binomial we did one of those last lesson as well but this one slightly up a notch so uh let's say we're doing all right with time actually so let's say um Let's say six minutes for these. 
Mm, yeah, six minutes seems fair. But do comment if you need help. I'll give you some hints. Um, and if you want to comment your answers, we can uh, we can see who gets the first correct answer. So give these two a go.
Cool. Alright, uh, you guys all ready? I can give you another minute if you need it. Do you want another minute? Tumbleweed. All right, <laughs> let's um, let's go through this. So, um, yeah, there's the equation. I'll write it back up again in the top. Okay, masses of penguins. So we got normally distributed mean. Blah 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 blah. So I can write it down. It's not much use to us. X is n squared. So we need to find all the unknowns in this one. So 10% of penguins, and let's do a 10% uh, of penguins have a mass less than 18. So 18 must be down here, and that's going to be 0 0.1 because it's 10%. 5% uh, have a mass greater than 30. So 30, 5%, 0 0.05. Cool. Sketch diagram. Job done. Um, find the value of mu and the value of sigma. Okay, so there's our diagram. We can put mu in the middle as well if we like. So we need to use a calculator to find the z values that correspond to these two numbers. And then we can use the red equation in the top to turn these back into mu and sigma and then solve simultaneously. So if I bring up the calculator. And we'll go tail to the left to start with. Put in 18. Nope, 18 can't be an area. Put in 0.1 as our area. And then execute. So that gives us minus 1.28. And we can do the same thing with the other one. So put in 0.05. Tail to the right, 0.05. Which, which, which you could actually do in the table as well if you wanted to. And we get 1.64. So those are my two values. Uh, cool to get out of the way. All right, those are the two values. I'll just get myself a bit smaller. I don't need to to be seen that well. There we go. All right. So we're going to code these using our z equation and get two linear equations, solve them simultaneously to find out what our mean and sigma are. So um, we'll have 1.64 equals 30 minus mu over sigma and minus 1.28 equals 18 minus mu over sigma. Rearrange those, subtract them, we'll use the calculator to solve them simultaneously or use substitution and you should get mu is 23.26 and sigma is 4.101 should be your answers all right so that's the first bit done um now we get the bit with penguins being chosen at random and it gets a bit harder so i'm going to make some space unless anyone has any questions doesn't look like it so we're going to need to use the bits that we've just found in part B. So let's write out our distribution. So we got <coughs> let's uh let's do this with M. So we're gonna say the mass of the penguins was a normal distribution with a mean of twenty three point two six and a sigma of four point one oh one. So I can get rid of this now. I already gave you guys a hint on this, so we said find the probability at least four of them have mass greater than twenty five. Where's X Sorry, why is x 30? Oh, you, you guys are jumping ahead. Okay. Right, so this is my normal distribution. Okay, 
Part C, 10 penguins are chosen at random. So we've got a sample size of 10. Find the probability for at least 4. So it's a binomial question for part C. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say x now is a binomial with a sample size of 10 and a probability of success that we don't know. So I could put p in there. OK, and we want to try and find the probability x is at least 4 greater than or equal to 4. So p, we don't know it, but p is the probability of a penguin weighing more than 25 kilograms. Is a probability the mass is more than 25. So we can see how this splits into two. On one side, we've got on one side we've got normal distribution for the masses. On the other side, we've got a binomial distribution for the number of penguins with a certain mass. <coughs> So, um, yeah, we, we need to do it basically. We need to find the probability the penguins have a mass of more than 25. To do that, we need to first of all find this probability so we can do the binomial distribution on this bit. To find this probability, we need to use a normal distribution to find this bit. So we've got to do a normal question again. And the answer we get will be this probability which will then let us do a binomial distribution to find the answer to this question. All right, so how are we going to do that? As um, If I write down, we want to try and find the probability that the mass is greater than 25. We don't need to code it or anything. We, we know the standard deviation and the mean now, so we're basically looking for this area, given that's 25, and given the mean is 23.26. So if I bring back the calculator, uh, exit, go back up. So we want a standard normal this time. So we're just going to go normal, NCD. Uh, lower is 25. Remember this from last lecture. Upper, well, penguin mass, let's go 50. It's not going to be any more than 50. Standard deviation, we worked out was 4.101. And mu is 23.26. Cool. And we can sketch it. It should look like our sketch on the board. There we go. Cool. So we find the probability is 0 0.3357. So that is the probability that a penguin has a mass of more than 25. So we're now going to use that probability in our binomial distribution up here. So I can get rid of where I wrote p, and I can now write in 0 0.3357. And now we can use the binomial distribution to try and solve this question. So we want greater than or equal to 4. On a class whiz, we um, have to do 1 minus less than or equal to 3, but we can do this on the uh, on the graphical. So if I bring back up the graphical calculator, control C, here we go. Um, oh, keep dragging everything today. So there's a calculator. Let's make it a bit smaller so we can actually see what's going on. So we want greater than 4. Uh, given the bits we've been told already. So if you go distribution, binomial distribution, we want the probability, so we're going for BCD. Our lowest value is 4. Our upper value, well, there's 10 penguins, so the most that could weigh that much is 10. Number of trials is 10, and our probability of success is 3357. So if we go to execute, and we get the probability is 0.4472. which is the answer. Cool. All right, has anyone got any questions about this one? Because this is pretty tricky. It's normal, almost as bad as it can get, having to work out what mu and sigma are, and then it turns into a binomial question as well. So pretty much as bad as it could get for a, a normal question. Um, has anyone got any questions at all? Um, 
We're almost at the end. I'm going to set you guys a bit of work to do. But that'll be it. Ollie, what was your question? Why is X30? I was, I was looking and I couldn't see. Uh... Oh, X is for... Okay, why is X30 in that case? Okay. 10% of the penguins had a mass less than 18 kilograms. Um, and 5% had a mass greater than 30. So X was the 30. X is the distribution that isn't the Z one. The Z one has a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Any other distribution we call X. Is that? Yeah, it's the mass of the penguin. So any any modeling thing, any penguin mass, weight of people, length of something, length of giraffe neck, whatever it is, those are always your X variables. Your Z variables are always the the classic standard normal with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Does that make sense? Good. Right, anybody else got any questions about this example that we did? No, doesn't look like it. You can always email stuff if you want, guys. Um, all right, so I did plan a couple other questions, but we're not going to get these done in five minutes. So... Um, what I reckon if you guys either screenshot this this slide, full screen it, and then screenshot it, screen, screen, can't say anything, screenshot it, or take a photo. Um, I would try these two questions at some point. Um, question 12 there also has the uh, binomial in it, and question 14 is just a kind of standard, standard normal question. But if you guys could try those, they're from page 52. So ask for help, either comments or email it or exam the physics and maths tutor edXL solution bank. Remember that's a thing. edXL solution bank. Uh, if you do need help with these two. But I would try and get these two done by your next lecture on Tuesday because we're going to be finishing off normal distribution next week. Cool. Oh, someone's at my door. I will be right back. I think I've got some posts and then we'll talk about exams and such. Check out all my posts. This is amazing. <sighs> Alright, so, um, yeah. We don't have college days. Oh, yeah, that's okay. This is a thing I need to speak to you about. Um, college is shut Monday, Tuesday. Uh, for some students, it's open ended next week, depending on your parents' circumstances. Um, lecturers are going to be starting video. All of your lecturers will be doing video lectures from Wednesday onwards. I would like to do our lectures on Monday and Tuesday anyway. I know you guys only have one on Tuesday, but um, I will be doing the lecture then. So if you could log in, it'd be good. I just want to keep things moving um, so we don't fall behind. If that's all right with you guys. So if you could log in from home on Tuesday um, and we'll keep going with the normal distribution. Okay, what questions have we got about things then? How will we be graded? Can you watch it in the evening? Yes, you can watch it in the evening. That's fine. Um, I'd rather you don't do that every week or every lecture because you will not get to ask questions. But yes, if you have to watch it afterwards, you can. If you have surfing planned especially. Um, yeah, how will you be graded? Boris said exams are cancelled, so they are they not postponed? We don't really know. Um, I think... Boris is meant to be clarifying what he meant by that uh, in his talk this evening. But we don't know if there's going to be some kind of exam 
at some point. Did he mean the exams are just cancelled in May and June, or did he mean they are flat cancelled? So there could still be an exam at the end of summer, depending if coronavirus gets sorted. So that's a possibility. The other possibility is that we have to grade you, and I'm not sure how they're going to make us do that. Um, I wouldn't like to give you guys your mock grades because I think that'd be unfair because the mocks were done in January and you all knew full well you had five more months to revise. So <clears throat> I don't think it would be fair to give you guys a grade until June because you all would have done more work leading up till June. So um, what will I base it on? It, it depends what we get told. I would base it partially on the mock grade, uh, partially on your homework and how hard you've worked in advance. If I taught you last year, then I kind of know what you're capable of improving by over four months. So I consider that as well. Um, would it consider how you'd have study leaving time sweat or revision? I hope so. Uh, worst, my, my ideal way of doing it, if, if there's no exams, my ideal way would be to do like a one-on-one -on -one interview with you guys in June once you've revised and just actually discuss maths and see what you understand out of the syllabus. Um, I yeah, I probably would take into account AS grades, but it would it would really be about what you knew in. I I would like it to be what you guys know in June because I think it's you know all this stuff is a bit chaotic. But I don't see why you can't still revise and be as prepared. Because we've almost finished teaching anyway. There's two weeks left of teaching. You guys would just be revising now. And I can do that on this. Um... <laughs> Probably not GCSE grades. Uh, how would I test you in June? I wouldn't test you in June. If um, if it was up to me, yeah, we'd had like a one-to-one -one chat. Each I would like Skype call every one of you for half an hour and talk to you about maths and see what you understand maybe ask you a couple questions how would i do this question so i get a feel for it but i don't know the college might tell us what we have to do the government might tell us what we have to do it's it's up in the air uh hopefully this evening after boris's next meeting we'll have an actual you must do it like this if it's hand wavy that's how i'd quite like to do it but um i want it to be fair first thing and I wouldn't want to do it now. I would want to give you guys grades in June based on what you're like as a student in June. I mean, if you got A's and A stars in your mock, then yeah, I probably would give you an A or an A star. But it's the students who got B's, D's or C's that were hoping for a better mark in the mocks. I would want to give you guys a fair chance to increase those grades. Because in past years, we do see students go up by grade sometimes too. So... um yeah, best I can advise, pretend you still have exams in June, um, although it's sounding like you probably don't. Use these online lessons, keep doing the homework assignments, and just get to the grade you want as in ability, and then I'll just make sure there's a way for you guys to prove that to me. But yeah, so I don't really know. There's certain ways that I'd like to see it done. But we will hopefully find out this evening what is actually going on, because no one has a clue. Does that make sense and answer any questions? I wouldn't worry about it, though. They will have to do it fairly. Um, they'll have to do it probably in your favour as well. So, yeah, but we'll see this evening what the actual plan is. Rob is worried. <laughs> saucy i wouldn't worry uh i think it will i think it'll work out better for you guys um they'll have to make it fair they'll have to make it fair with a slight you know give them a chance i think i think it'll be less strict than it would be more strict what do we do about assignments who do we send them to how do we send them to you i don't know yet keep doing them i'll try and work out where i can collect the main thing is that you do them that you've got the answers if you do them and get them right that's the point um yeah uh so keep doing the assignments keep correcting them keep emailing me if you get stuck i don't know how i'm going to collect them in i don't know how i'm going to check it off um the point is that you learn and understand the maths the point isn't really tick you did it it's getting 
the most out of it but yeah we'll see see what happens later and i'm sure on tuesday i'll be able to give you guys a bit more info about things um but for now to keep doing the work because that's the point of it the point of the work isn't so i can see it it's that you use the work to learn so um yeah any other questions guys Cool. I mean, I will be repeating this lesson in 35 minutes if anybody wants to watch it again. Um, cool. I'm going to go make some lunch, though. So have a nice weekend, and I will... Um, have we got mechanics test marks? For us? Haven't marked the mechanics test yet because, yeah, I will this weekend, so I'll let you know on Tuesday. If Boris decides we don't do the exam, will we still do video lectures? Yeah, I have to. That's <laughs> my job. So, um, yeah, there will be video lectures. I would advise you guys to watch them because I think there will be some kind of proof that you need to show that you understand statistics still. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be doing these lectures no matter what, and I'm going to be pretty bored. Like, there's <laughs> I've started a load of DIY projects, but there's only been so many things I can do at home. So I will probably go back and do everything again.